Hi, this is Mrs. Wiederholt. Welcome to my lesson video on completing the square, part two. Now let's get started. So far, you have learned how to solve quadratic equations by graphing and by factoring. However, there are some equations that you cannot solve by factoring. And let me give you this example. x squared plus 16x minus 7. Now if we use our steps for factoring, we would say what are the factors of a times c that add up to b? So we would be asking what are the factors of negative 7 that add up to 16? Well, there's only two factors for negative 7, and that is 1 times 7. Obviously one of them would be a negative number. But there's nothing you can do. 1 plus 7 gives you 8. 1 minus 7 gives you negative 6. So there's no way to combine those factors to get that middle term. And so that means that this equation, in its current state, is unfactorable. So in this lesson video, we are going to learn a new method that will make an equation like this factorable. Completing the square is a method that allows us to make all quadratics factorable by creating a perfect square trinomial. If you do not remember how to create a perfect square trinomial or haven't learned how to do that yet, watch my lesson video with that title, Creating a Perfect Square Trinomial, and that will help. Now let's go through the steps for completing the square. We will use the equation x squared plus 8x minus 20 equals 0. Step number one says to move c, the c value, to the other side, meaning the other side of the equation. So I will add 20 to both sides of the equation. And so when I do that, if you notice where the negative 20 was, I've put a square there. Because by moving 20 to the right side of the equation, we are now creating a space so that we can create that perfect square trinomial. You might be wondering why I also added a square to the right side of the equation. And that's because if you square one side, you square the other. Um, kind of joking aside, um, that is true though. We are going to find that perfect square to make our perfect square trinomial on the left side. But whatever that number is, if we're going to add it to the left side, we also have to add it to the right side. So step number two is to create a perfect square trinomial. Well, we do that by taking the b term, which is 8, and we're going to divide it by 2. 8 divided by 2 is 4, and so then we will square 4. 4 squared is 16. So that is what will go in each box. We're going to be adding 16 to each side of the equation. Now actually, we didn't just do step number 2. We did step numbers 2, 3, and 4. Because you're creating the perfect square trinomial, okay, that's what we did when we took the b and we divided it by 2. And then the third step says to square it and add it to the equation. Well, we did that. We squared 4, 4 squared is 16, and so we added it to the equation. And then step 4 says we have to balance it by adding it to the other side of the equation as well. So now we are ready to factor the trinomial that we just created. We do this by taking the square root of the first term, which would be x, the square root of x squared is x. And then we will take the square root of our new term, the square root of 16, which would be 4. And you can put the parentheses. And then we are going to use the plus sign because the plus sign is what was in that original binomial. So we have factored this. x plus 4 squared is the factored form of x squared plus 8x plus 16. Now we have to remember that this is equal to 20 plus 16, so that would be equal to 36. So now we are ready 
to solve this equation. Because x plus 4 is squared, we need to take the square root of that so that we can get down to just x plus 4. So let's do that. I'm going to take the square root of x plus 4 squared. But remember, if I do it to the left side, I also have to take the square root on the right side. The result is, on the left side of the equation, I now have x plus 4. And on the right side of the equation, the square root of 36 can be plus or minus 6, meaning positive 6 times positive 6 equals 36, and we also know that negative 6 times negative 6 equals 36. I will continue to solve for x by now subtracting 4 from each side. And I'm going to put on the right side, I'm going to put it right there, and I'll show you why. We, we know that on the left side, my 4's cancel out. And so now I'm going to rewrite this in two ways. I have x equals positive 6 minus 4, and I have x equals negative 6 minus 4. Because the square root of 36 can be either positive or negative 6, that means I have two possible solutions. So that's why for my first one, I'm saying that x equals to positive 6 minus 4. And then for my second solution, I've said that x could equal negative 6 minus 4. So my solutions for x, for my first one um, of x equals 6 minus 4, that means x could equal 2. And then for the second one, x equals negative 6 minus 4, we're saying that x equals negative 10. So as you see, we have two solutions here. Think about this if you were to see it on a graph. This would be a parabola that would open upward because our a value is positive, so we know it's a parabola that opens upward, and because there are two solutions, we know that it intersects the x-axis in two places. I know this is a lot to remember, and the only way you're going to learn it is to practice, practice, practice. Please use this video to help you as you're working a problem. You can pause with each step so that you can go right alongside the problem you are trying to do. Next, we are going to see how, the, how we can use the completing the square method to change a standard form of a quadratic equation into the vertex form of a quadratic equation. We are going to use the equation y equals x squared plus 10x minus 15. Because we want to solve for x, I am going to go ahead and I'm going to replace the y with 0. So now we have 0 equals x squared plus 10x minus 15. Now our first step will be to move the c value, which in this case is negative 15, to the other side of the equation. And we're doing this so that we can make room so that we can create our perfect square trinomial. So I will add 15 to both sides. Now on the left side of my equation, I have 15, but instead of going ahead and saying equals, I'm going to say plus a square. And that's making room for that perfect square that we're going to be creating here in just a minute. So I have 15 plus square equals x squared plus 10x. And because the negative 15 plus 15 cancels out, I now have room for my perfect square. We create the perfect square by taking the b value, which in this case is 10, and we divide it by 2. 10 divided by 2 is 5, so now we will square 5, and our perfect square will be 25. So I'm going to put 25 in each square. Now I am ready to combine my like terms on the left side of the equation and factor the terms on the right side of my equation. 15 plus 25 is 40, and on the right side of my equation, 
I take the square root of the first term, so the square root of x squared is x. Then I take the square root of the third term, so the square root of 25 is 5. And I use the operation that was in the original binomial, so I put a plus in the middle, and then I put my parentheses and I square it. We are very close to being done. In order to get this in the vertex form though, I need to now subtract 40 from each side. And when I rewrite it, I'm going to, instead of putting 0, I'm going to put the y back in. Because 40 minus 40 is 0, so now I'm going to replace that 0 with the y. And I have y equals x plus 5 squared minus 40. So this is the vertex form of a quadratic equation, where 5 represents the h value and negative 40 represents the k value. And if you remember, the h and k value represent the vertex of the quadratic equation. Now we have learned a lot in this lesson video. I hope it truly helps you with um, working with quadratic equations and learning a new method to solve them. And I look forward to working with you again. Bye-bye.